No. Let me tell you a story that will make your head spin faster than a dreidel on Hanukkah. It all started in our little shtetl of Ostrowenka, a place so small, even the fleas were on a first name basis. Our shtetl was like any other. Poor but proud, pious, and yet full of everyday squabbles. Life was hard, but we got by thanks to the Almighty's blessings and the hard work of our women folk, it must be said. There was Yossel the tailor, a timid soul who jumped at his own shadow, and Mendel the butcher, as wide as he was tall, with a voice that could shake the heavens, and who could forget Fivel, our resident Schlimazel, who couldn't walk down the street without knocking over a cart or stepping in a puddle. Ah, but what a tapestry of life our little shtetl wove. The air was always alive with music, as if the very streets were humming a frelick. Klezmer musicians were as plentiful as opinions in the shul, each one playing with more heart than the last. Yonkel the fiddler could make his strings sing like a cantor on Yom Kippur, while Shmulik, the pianist's trills, were so joyful even the most curmudgeonly Zadie's toes would start tapping. But the wisest and most respected of all was our rabbi, Reb Yitzhak Biawistok. To call him learned would be an understatement. The man was a walking encyclopedia. Physics, mathematics, even the newfangled science of engineering, there was nothing he didn't know. We took great pride in our rabbi. Scholars came from far and wide to study at his feet. But his greatest talent, ah, that was a secret. For months, strange sounds came from the rabbi's workshop clanking, banging, and a peculiar whirring noise that made you wonder if a dibbuk had possessed the poor man's tools. What's Reb Yitzhak up to? Yosel the tailor wondered. Maybe he's inventing a new way to press herring. Menahem the butcher chuckled. But Fivel, our resident Schlemazel, had the most meshugany theory of all. I bet he's building a golem. We all laughed till our bellies hurt. A golem? Who had time for fairy tales? We had chickens to pluck and prayers to recite. But Fivel, for once, was right. One bright morning, Reb Yitzhak called a meeting in the shul. The whole shtetl showed up, curious as cats. My friends, the rabbi announced, his eyes twinkling, I have found a way to protect our people. Behold, the mechanical golem, and with a flourish, he unveiled his creation. It was a sight to behold, a towering figure of gleaming metal with gears for muscles and a heart powered by Torah. The shtetl folk gaped in wonder. But Reb Yitzhak, Yossel sputtered, how did you do it? The rabbi grinned. With a little faith, a lot of elbow grease, and a generous helping of chutzpah. From that day on, Life in Ostrowenka changed. Reb Yitzhak took a group of us under his wing, teaching us the secrets of golem making. There was Shmuel the blacksmith, Dovid the carpenter, and even Fivel the Schlimazel found a place on the assembly line, though he was prone to getting his beard caught in the gears. Together, we worked day and night, building a veritable army of mechanical golems. But our joyful labors were soon put to the test. A gang of local hooligans, emboldened by one too many glasses of vodka, decided to pay our shtetl a visit. They swaggered down the main street, clubs in hand, ready to break some windows and maybe a few Jewish noses while they were at it. But they weren't expecting to meet our newly minted golem patrol. Halt, you schmendricks, Reb Yitzhak commanded, his voice booming like the shofar on Yom Kippur. The startled ruffians froze as a dozen gleaming golems stepped out from the shadows, their mechanical eyes glowing with righteous indignation. By the beard of the Tsar, the leader of the gang squeaked, dropping his jaw and club. It's a bunch of tin soldiers. Tin soldiers? Reb Yitzhak chuckled. No, my friends, these are the guardians of Ostrowenka, and you, I believe, are trespassing. The hooligans couldn't run away fast enough, tripping over their own feet in their haste to escape. 
We all cheered as they vanished into the night, our golems standing tall and proud. But that was just the beginning. Word of our miraculous machine soon spread, and with it, the anger of those who wished us harm. Little did we know that the surrounding villages were gathering their forces, whipped into a frenzy by wild rumors and ancient hatreds. A veritable army was on the march, and Ostrowenka was directly in its path. As the mob drew closer, the people of Ostrowenka prepared for battle. Each villager had poured their heart and soul into their own mechanical golem, imbuing it with a touch of their unique personality. Yossel's golem had a penchant for whistling Yiddish lullabies as it patrolled the streets. Mendel's creation, built like a barrel, could crush a brick with its pinky finger. And Fievel's, well, let's just say it had a habit of walking into walls, but these quirks only endeared the golems to us more. They were like family. The enemy arrived at dawn, a seething mass of pitchforks and prejudice. At their head was a towering brute of a man, his beard matted with bits of yesterday's borscht. Surrender, Jews! He bellowed in heavily accented Yiddish. We know of your dark magic. Your golems are fueled by the blood of Christian children. Reb Yitzhak stepped forward, his eyes narrowed. And I suppose the Pope himself told you this Bobbe Meise? The mob leader sputtered, his face turning an unflattering shade of beet red. You will pay for your crimes, Zid. And with that, the battle began. The ruffians surged forward, a human wave of hate and ignorance. But they were no match for Ostrowenka's mechanical marvels. Yossel's golem hummed a jaunty tune as it sent attackers flying like schmatters in the wind. Mendel's colossus plowed through the mob like a kugel through a hungry man's digestive tract. Even Fievel's clumsy creation managed to take out a few ruffians by accidentally stepping on their toes. As the sun began to set, the battle turned in our favor. The once mighty mob was reduced to a whimpering huddle, their pitchforks and their prejudices lying broken at their feet. Reb Yitzhak approached the leader, his golem at his side. And now, my friend, you have a choice. You can leave in peace and take your poisonous stories with you. Or he didn't need to finish the sentence. With a terrified yelp, the mob leader scrambled to his feet and ran, his followers close behind. Their cries of golem, golem echoed through the hills. And so, life in Ostrowenka returned to normal or as normal as life can be with a squadron of mechanical golems in your midst. The machines became an integral part of our community. They helped with the harvest, stood guard during our holidays, and even learned to play a respectable game of chess. Reb Yitzhak continued to tinker in his workshop, forever seeking ways to improve his creations. Rumor has it he's even working on a golem that can make the perfect matzah ball. And so, my friends, that is the story of how our little shtetl became the talk of the pale. A Purim story to beat all Purim stories. But here I've gone running my mouth like my Aunt Shane Shandle after too much Pesach wine. So I'll just leave you with this. If ever your shtetl is besieged by pogroming Cossacks, don't despair. Just send a telegram to Rabbi Yitzhak and his mechanical minion. They'll be there faster than you can say, Lachaim. As for me, dear reader, I'm off to the Rebbe's workshop to commission my own personal Purim protector, perhaps a singing and somersaulting Shalom Aleichem Automaton, to accompany me on my journeys and keep the Cossacks at bay with a barrage of clever wisecracks. As we say in Ostrowenka, it couldn't hurt.